it is getting cold out. My hives are all ready for the cold weather. It is in the 50s as the daytime high. We're here in southeastern Pennsylvania and there are two things left for, to do for my bees before temperatures really get into the <laughs> freezing cold as the daytime high. And that is give them emergency feed and do one final treatment for Varroa mites. I treated early spring, I treated in the late summer, and now this is the third and final treatment. I know we just treated not that long ago, but the second treatment was so that we had healthy bees, so that the winter bees were nice and strong. But because of all the rabbing, due to the lack of food out there, a high amount of row mites come into your hive in a very short period of time. And we wanna make sure that our hive has the lowest mite count possible for when we are not able to monitor for mites, do mite testing, or put in treatments in those really freezing cold temperatures. So in this video, I am not going to actually treat my hives because right now it's not actually time yet. It's not cold enough. What I'm gonna to talk to you about are the three treatment options for you guys that are approaching a cold winter. So that you know what you need, you know which way you are going to treat your hives and you are ready for the next video, which is where I actually do the treatment. Oxalic acid is your friend if you are coming into a cold winter soon. It is organic and it is uh, even safe to have honey supers on the hive when treating. It is especially effective when there is no brood present and that is why we like to put it in in the late fall. There are three ways in which you can administer oxalic acid into your beehive. There is the Viroxan strips, the dribble method, and vaporization. The first one I wanna talk about is rock sand strips. These are a time release of oxalic acid into the hive. These strips are folded in half and draped over the frames of brood. You want to have one of these strips for every 2.5 frames of brood, no more than four strips per 10 frame brood box. All you do is put it in the hive, drape it over the frames, making sure to not have them too close together and having them where the majority of the bees are clustered up because the bees need to come in contact with these strips. After six to eight weeks, you remove the strips. After two weeks, you do want to check on it and just make sure that the strips are still where the majority of the bees and brood are so that it is still working. The benefit to the Roxanne strips is it's very easy to use and it is effective when there is brood present because oxalic acid does not penetrate through the beeswax walls of the pupa where a lot of varroa mites can be found. And so if you still have pupa in your beehive, the Roxanne strips will get those bees when they emerge. It's very easy to administer. There's very little user error compared to the vaporization there's less safety gear needed, and it can be used with honey supers on the hive. The downside to using the rock sand strips, because it does sound great and the best choice, is that you do not want to put it in the hive, for me now, if temperatures are in the 50s and the bees are clustered up. Once it's cold enough that the bees are clustered up and outside temperatures are below 60 in the daytime, these strips are not gonna be effective because you need the bees to be walking around to come in contact with the strip. The other thing is, is that these are on the pricier side in comparison to the dribble method and you have to keep buying it year after year. And actually it's quite popular right now and sometimes the smaller packages sell out of a lot of the beekeeping supply sites.
Your next option is the oxalic acid dribble method. And if you are a beginner beekeeper, this is the one that I recommend for you. If the temperatures are getting below 60 degrees Fahrenheit out, or you anticipate that it will be in the next four weeks. The oxalic acid dribble method is making a sugar syrup that is one part sugar to one part water, just like you do when you're feeding your bees in the spring or the late summer. This dribble bottle is really helpful. I got this on Better Bee and you can put all of the syrup you need in there. This holds up to 450 milliliters. So you fill it up what you need for all of the hives. You don't want to put more than 30 milliliters per box and no more 50 milliliters per beehive. And you just dribble in the seams in between the frames where there are bees. I highly recommend doing a test run, filling this up with water, putting the mask and gloves and all the safety gear on and doing this in an empty beehive in your garage first. You wanna do this dribble method when the outside daytime temperatures are between 40 to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. You want your bees clustered up for this. If the bees are not clustered up, then you wanna take a smoker and smoke the bees so that they all cluster up together. The benefit to using the dribble method is that it requires very little equipment. It's very cheap and this will last you years. If you get your bag here, I have of Easy Ox Oxalic Acid. Make sure you are getting the approved oxalic acid. Wood bleach is oxalic acid and can be found at many hardware stores, but it is not approved for use in the beehive, especially if you are going to be consuming the honey, giving it out to people or selling it. So here in the US, you want EPA approved oxalic acid, which is what you can find at the beekeeping supply sites. So the benefit to this is that when temperatures are below 55 Fahrenheit, it is too cold out to use strips of any kind of mite treatment. Oxalic acid dribble method is a great way to go. And there is a lot less user error than using the vaporizer. It is very easy to do and it is a one time treatment. The downsides to using the oxalic acid and the dribble method is that you are opening up the beehive and exposing the brood. The other thing is, is that you can only do this once. So if there is brood present, then the vaporizer or strips might be a better method for you, or you're going to wait a little bit longer. And in addition, once you do one of these treatments of oxalic acid, say in the late fall, you do not want to do it again come January or February or March because oxalic acid is not good for the bees. And so when it's in the sugar syrup, sometimes bees will consume the syrup and that can shorten the lifespan of the bees. The third and final way that you can administer oxalic acid in your beehive in the cold temperatures is using a vaporizer. Now they have these vaporizer wands that usually run about one to $200. And these you want to connect to a battery. You can just get a cheap motorcycle battery. Maybe you'll have one on your riding on mower or a golf cart but they, there also are vaporizers that fumigate the hive that come with their own battery attached to it. And those you're looking at between three to $500 for. This one you are putting right into the front entrance. And the way this works is that you are loading the tray up with the oxalic acid, you put it in the hive. You wanna make sure that the hive is closed up. So screen bottoms need to have a board on the bottom if they don't already. And if say you are doing this in the warmer months, make sure you're taking duct tape to close off any upper entrances or holes and cracks in the beehive. You put this in, you want to take a towel and place it over the front entrance to close up the rest of the entrance and you turn on the vaporizer. Vapor is released into the hive, vaporizer is shut off, you take it out and you move on to the next one. In the video description, I have links to really great videos of other people have already made how to administer each of these three treatments. The benefit to using oxalic acid with the vaporizer method is that you don't have to open the hive, so you're not losing that crucial heat. You can administer multiple dosage you usually want to do it if there is still a brood present every five days over the course of the next few weeks. And that is okay, whereas the dribble method is not okay to administer it multiple times over a short period of time. The downside to using a vaporizer is that they are so much more expensive than all of these other tools. There is also a much higher user error using the vaporizer than these other items. 
um, it is also gets really hot. So you're not going to want to use it on the polystyrene hives, like the white one that I have behind me. And it can, if you have frames where these are drawing comb all the way down off of the frames, you do not want it to come in contact with bees or beeswax, which is highly flammable. And some people also just don't like the fumigation aspect of it. It is harmful to your health if you do not wear the proper respirator. But again, if you are using a vaporizer or the dribble method, don't use these uh, to lower your viral mite levels too soon. Wait until temperatures cool down and the bees aren't robbing each other so that you are getting the majority of the mites in the hive and more aren't coming in a couple of weeks later. Okay, I was editing this video that I filmed yesterday and realized that I left an important part out, which is my experience using these products and what I am going to be doing with my bees this year. When it comes down to it, the dribble method is my preferred method. And that is because it is cheaper than the Varoxan strips. I just get tired of spending so much money every year on beekeeping stuff. And it needs to be in the beehive for six to eight weeks, which is a really long time and requires advanced planning. You're pretty much putting it in like after you stop your late summer treatment. The vaporizer, I hated. I used it in Hawaii and so there was always brood present and I had over 20 hives. And I do not have anything that requires a, a battery that so that I can just bring it out to the bees. So I had to buy a motorcycle battery and then I had to buy a battery charger. So it was very awkward and clumsy and I found a waste of $160. I also can't use it on my polystyrene hives and I want something that I can use on all my beehives. I don't want to have to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that. The dribble method is not great because it is the one that is the harshest on the bees because you're using syrup and the bees want to consume the syrup and it's not good for their health to consume the syrup. And if it's just a one time use. So if there is brew present, and you're opening the beehive. And so it's not ideal, but I hate wearing that big mask. I hate having to get the battery and charge it up. And I hate just the being around those gases. And I just hate everything that goes around the vaporization method. I do not have one of those $500 vaporizers that some people love. And what I've found is that when the people have those nicer equipment, they tend to like their vaporizer a little bit more. And that makes total sense. But for somebody that only has a handful of hives, it just financially doesn't really make much sense for me. And it is not necessary. The dribble method is easy to do and it is effective. Now, Another thing that makes me like the dribble method more and recommend it more to people is because the, I was recently talking to the people at Better Bee and they're really trying to make using the dribble method as easy as possible. And I think there's a reason for that because they have their dribbler bottle, which makes administering it in the beehive easy, even easier. They have these little packets so you don't even have to measure out your oxalic acid if you don't want to you just pour that packet i believe it's for one liter of sugar syrup and any excess you don't need for your bees you can just dispose of and not have to measure out anything or need a scale but they are working on um syrup i guess you could call it that has oxalic acid already mixed in. However, it's not sugar syrup. It is another liquid that has oxalic acid in it and you dribble it over the bees. Since it's not sugar syrup, the bees aren't inclined to want to eat it and therefore it is not so harmful to the bees. And so you can administer it uh, multiple times as you can with the vaporizer. So that is my two cents on this. I am going to be using the dribble method on all of my beehives, except for the one that I use my vaporizer on just for you so that you can see how I do it, but it is not my preferred way. All right, back to the video.
Also remember to use proper safety gear. So that is the proper gloves, eye protection, the proper mask depending on which method you are using. Wear a long sleeve shirt, wear long pants, closed toe shoes. People can have a splash in their eyes. They can burn themselves. Oxalic acid is found in nature, but it is also still an acid. Now you can use oxalic acid with honey supers on the hive. The Veroxan strips, one reason why I think they're so popular is because if you do need to treat for varroa mites, during a nectar flow, when there are honey supers on the hive and you want to be able to harvest them for consumption, then the Veroxan strips are a really great option. However, they do say on the packaging, it is not recommended. So it is not something you should plan for. It is a last resort. If you have any tips, products that you highly recommend that you want to share with people watching this video, please leave them below in the comments. It uh, really helps make the videos even more helpful to everyone that is watching them. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for my next videos where I will be administering oxalic acid using the dribble method in my poly hive. And then I will be doing oxalic acid using my vaporizer wand in one of my wooden hives. If you have not prepared your beehive for winter yet, don't forget to check out my recent video about how to overwinter a beehive. It includes a free download with the whole beehive little setup diagram for you so you understand the parts to a beehive and how I set it up here in southeastern Pennsylvania. See you next time.